feel like a lot of people have this dream of loading up their paramotor and flying into the wilderness and spending the night. Well, in reality, it's a lot more challenging than it seems and not a lot of people actually do it. This week I decided to get out of my comfort zone and do exactly that. I loaded up my duffel bag and flew my paramotor to an island and spent the night all by myself. There were successes. Some straight up man versus wild shit right here. And there were definitely some failures. I got two more of these bad boys to cook. I feel like it. There's definitely an animal. There's a fucking animal out there. But overall, I'm really glad that I actually went out and did it for the first time. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm gonna take a duffel bag, stuff a bunch of camping supplies in it, take this paramotor behind me, take off down the street, fly to an island somewhere on the river, land, and spend the night there. This is gonna be a little bit outside of my comfort zone. So my first order of business was to make sure that my paramotor was in good mechanical shape. If I had any type of mechanical failure, I would basically be stranded on the island. I didn't have a plan B, no backup boat, no friends in the vicinity. So I made a few minor tweaks to the engine, fueled it up with eight liters of gas, and I was ready to go. Next, I had to pack my bag. I grabbed the essentials like a sleeping bag, my tent. I filled a cooler with some food and beer, a couple electronics, and some fire starting gear. I wanted to test out this configuration on my motor, so I did a quick test fit in the garage. The bag weighed maybe 30 pounds and made it a little bit difficult to run, but I figured it would work all right, so I headed to the local airport to take off. Now, to be honest, I wasn't that nervous about the initial takeoff with this bag. I had a big open field and plenty of wind. What I was more worried about was the tight landing and the tight takeoff in zero wind the next morning from our island especially with this duffel bag making things difficult. So I laid everything out and I was ready to take off, but I had a few hiccups before I could even leave the ground. First, my netting popped off of my paramotor. Oh shit. The netting is supposed to protect my arms from going into the propeller and it just snapped off. It broke in a way that could have gone straight through my propeller and busted at mid-flight. So I'm glad I caught this. As I was getting set up again, my selfie stick deployed, which was super embarrassing. But once I got everything dialed in, I took off into the headwind and my flight was going well so far. I'm nervous about right now. One is landing when we get over to the island with the current wind conditions because it's pretty windy right now. The other thing I'm nervous about is taking off in the morning with zero wind from this really tight island. But we're going to make safe decisions. If something doesn't look right, we're not going to do it. Worst case scenario, we turn around and we come back to safety. So I think now's a good time to mention, if you're enjoying this video, I would really appreciate if you dropped a like on it right now. Additionally, if you want to represent my brand Risky Biscuits Co., check out the first link in the description at tuckergot.com. We have a bunch of cool paramotor related merch and we just came out with some new colorways of the original Risky design. Also, if you're looking to get into the sport and you need an ozone wing, harness, reserve, or even an e-props propeller, hit me up info at tuckergot.com and I'd be happy to help you out. So anyway, my flight was going really well. That is until right about when I got to the destination. I was flying along and the turbulence wasn't that bad and then all of a sudden it literally felt like I flew into a wall of crazy strong wind. Just hit some really gnarly winds. And there it is again. I don't know what the fuck that was. It's like I just flew into a wall of wind and I looked down and the fucking trees are bending backwards over there. I am proceeding with utmost caution. How I dealt with this problem, I laid out a couple different options. Something had obviously changed in the wind, so I had to change my plan accordingly. One, I could find a safer place to land and wait out the stronger winds. Two, I could turn around and go home. Or three, I could just stay at a high altitude and hope that the winds died down. 
Because I didn't feel like turning around and because I didn't really have an alternative landing site available, I decided to wait it out and about 15 minutes later, it seemed like the winds had calmed down, so I made an approach to land. Okay, so that's our island right there. I'm staying high and I'm gonna fly closer to it and see if I can see what the winds are doing. Look at the trees down there. Okay, we're directly over the island. I'm gonna start descending and see how the winds feel down lower. Proceeding very cautiously after those gnarly, gnarly winds I hit back there. Judging by the direction, I'm gonna come in over the river and try to land it on the tip over there somewhere. Ooh, now I can see the winds down there are definitely kicking. Yes, indeed. We are on the island, and my kill switch seems to be broken. Holy shit! <laughs> that was scary. Let's put this guy down. Whew. Holy shit! Wow. <sighs> my hand's shaking a little. Oh wow couple things it's not crazy windy down here obviously like the trees were blowing a little bit but still just enough to make it challenging but just enough to make it safe ish um, but first order of business I'm gonna pack up my wing I'm gonna figure out a good spot to set up camp um, I have to find firewood get a fire going hopefully and see where I'm gonna put my tent so let's get to it so there's definitely some type of animal tracks I want to say that's deer I'm sure there's animals that pass by on this island, but hopefully not anything that would want to eat me. All good! <laughs> no, I, I'm trying to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate those guys. They were worried about me. Okay, we got to find a nice sandy patch to put our tent. So this is the westmost side of the island that has the rocky shore. And this is potentially a better spot to launch tomorrow morning because it's more wide open. But obviously these rocks are not easy to run on. So we'll see how that works out. I don't think there's any good spots to put a tent over here though. So I'm gonna stick to my options on this side. So here we are. This is the most upstream part of the island, the very tip of it. And there's nowhere good to lay out a tent here. So I think I'm gonna go with one of my options back a little bit further. I'm still impressed that I landed here with the amount of wind that's going on. Like we're down a little bowl. Give myself pass on the back for not dying. So I've switched up my campsite like multiple times now. And ultimately I've decided on this one. It's kind of protected behind all this foliage. So no passerbyers will see me out here. And uh, there's a little sandy patch to put my tent. I'm hoping it's big enough. Um, should be, I just need a soft spot to lay down. So I'm gonna pitch the tent and then I'm gonna start looking for firewood and hopefully, like I said, I'm not a boy scout. Hopefully I can get a fire going. All right, camp is pretty much set up. My tent's not too bad. I got plenty of space for myself, my body to just be on sand, even though the tent's overlapping a little bit paramotor, the wing all set up. Only thing to do now is to start a fire and I'm not very good at that. However, everything's going really well so far, but this is looking legit. So I'm gonna go around and find a bunch of fire starting materials, gather them and hopefully start my fire right here. Some straight up man versus wild shit right here. So I'm making piles of small sticks, medium sized sticks, and larger sticks. I feel like every time I try to start a fire, it lights up real quick, and then very shortly after just dies out and is depressing. So we're gonna give this the best possible opportunity for success. 
Okay, here it goes. Y'all are about to witness either the magic of man making fire or frustration. Hopefully it's the former. Okay, the fire situation seems to be going really well so far. I'm just worried about how long I'm gonna be able to keep it going. Cause I've used all of my small twigs and all I have is these giant ones I can't break. So we'll see how she goes. I need to cook dinner on this fire. So I'm gonna start moving big logs in next. So fire's going pretty good. I feel good about the amount of wood I have on hand. All I really need is for this to burn long enough for me to cook my food. So that brings me to my food. Got a three pack of buns, a three pack of bratwurst, two ice cold premium IPAs. So my plan is to put said bratwurst on this stick and attempt to cook it over the fire. <laughs> that is potentially one of the best beers I've had in any recent time. Out on an island all by myself, fire started, paramotor tent, this is magical. I find it interesting how, at least myself, I'm sure other people relate to this, can get very complacent with being comfortable. Like I could be at home right now in my house cooking on a stove top, but it's experiences like this that are really exciting and really matter in life, I think. But you have to take that step and go out and do something that's uncomfortable. I was scared to do this today, but I went and did it anyway. I'm scared to take off tomorrow morning. We'll see how that goes, but I'm glad I'm here. This is fucking awesome. This is it. It's primitive out here. This fire is hot, man. Check back when this bad boy is done. <clears throat> All right, hopefully that is thoroughly cooked. Lessons learned from that cooking experience. Um, I need a longer stick because I was burning up next to that fire. Second, I hope one end is thoroughly cooked. I know one end is a little burnt. It's a little bit uneven, but we'll get it dialed in. Incredible. Woo. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go get a longer stick. I got two more of these bad boys to cook. I feel like it. There's definitely an animal. There's a fucking animal out there. There's a deer on this island. I can hear it. I'm gonna go find it. This is my island. That's right. <laughs> That right there is how the Native Americans used to chase away the deer. Bratwurst number two, a nice golden brown. That one is much more evenly cooked. Longer stick was perfect. So some late night thoughts as I cook my third and final bratwurst. I just feel really fulfilled and grateful right now. Fulfilled meaning this mission is working exactly as I had planned. Grateful that I have opportunities to do things like this. I mean, I'm sitting on an island cooking a bratwurst over a fire I created and I flew here. I came out of the sky and tomorrow morning, I'm gonna pack everything up and run across this island, take off, and fly over the earth back to the airport where I started. It's just really incredible. That is a damn fine bratwurst. So it looks like I got just the right amount of wood for my campfire. And this bad boy's gonna burn for maybe another 30 minutes or so, maybe an hour. I'm just gonna hang out and enjoy it 
have some peace, turn the camera off for a little while. Yeah, this is sick. I've got one more beer to enjoy, probably go pee in the river, and uh, lay out my sleeping bag in the tent, curl up, and I'll see you guys in the morning for a very challenging launch. Hopefully everything goes flawlessly, as flawlessly as it's gone so far, and we'll soar high above the earth and drop back to the airport tomorrow morning. Good morning. Last night went pretty quick. It was only five or six hours worth of sleep. I didn't sleep great, honestly. Sleeping on the sand was kind of hard. I wish I had my sleeping pad, but I had to sacrifice it. I just packed up camp. It's obviously not windy this morning, but there's like the faintest amount of wind that will affect a paramotor launch. And I have to figure out what direction the wind's coming from, because you always want to launch into the wind, especially in a sketchy scenario like this where we're on rocky river stone and it's a short takeoff no matter how we cut it. So I'm gonna do some evaluating, see which way the wind's going. I think I'm gonna take off right here, right at the water, but we shall see. One thing left to do is just lay out the wing, get everything set up and stick it like it counts. Cause like I said, if I break a prop, hurt myself, anything, I have no plan of how to get out of here. I really didn't think that far. Let's not botch this. It'll be fine. Everything's fine. Oh, thank God. I fucking did it. <laughs> the flight home was absolutely gorgeous. All of the hard parts of this flight were behind me. I had stuck the turbulent landing, made it past the challenging takeoff on the river rocks, and now I was rewarded with perfectly smooth morning air for the flight home. I only had about three liters of gas left in my tank, so I just cruised up high and flew straight back to the airport for a nice soft landing. I think that mission went just about as perfectly as it could have gone. The only real hiccup was the flight out there when the winds got super gnarly and I was thinking I might not be able to pull it off, but then we pulled it off. Appreciate you guys watching. If you watched to this point and you enjoyed, please drop a like. And like I mentioned, if you want to show more support, check out tuckergot.com, Risky Biscuits Co. We've got ozone wings, reserves, harnesses, e-props, repellers, check it out. I'm going to go get some breakfast and take a shower and have a wonderful day. Hope you guys have a wonderful day as well. Till the next one, have fun, fly safe. Peace.